The saying in Spanish, agua es vida, water is life, water is everything. And without water, we can't live. Water is probably the single limiting resource that affects growth in Taos County. It's what makes this beautiful blue planet we're on so special. It's like air is important for the future. <laughs> it's just so absolutely essential. The only places that villages started was where there was water. There's probably no natural resource that has as defining an influence. The water, the acequia, and the community are, uh, are approaching the same definition. Here, water is, uh, is actually the essence of our community. We're in one of the uh, oldest settled areas in the United States, and it's been settled based on water. About 100 years ago, uh, they built some dams upstream of Santa Fe. So up in those hills, back there, they've got some dams that the city built so that they could have water for their water supply. There's a long traditional pattern of houses being located on the drier portions of the land and keeping the irrigated lands um, set aside for, for agriculture. The only water that is available for any kind of development has to come from agriculture. That's a very sad fact. So basically a water right is a, a piece of paper that says you have rights to use the water as long as you put it to beneficial use. You have the town of Taos, you have Taos Pueblo, you have the El Prado Water and Sanitation Districts, you have uh, 55 acequias in this area and 12 mutual domestic water associations, all of which have water rights. First in time, first in right, which means the Native Americans were here first and used the water first so they have first uh, access to the water. The Asequias were here second in history, so then they get uh, second use to the water in the priority system, and then everyone else is third. A lot of people who own water rights say, I think, you know, water should be pretty much free for everybody, but when they sell their property, they want to get paid the amount of money that their water, works, water rights are worth with respect to the property. We believe that Asequias are, like you said, they are the local governments and they are actually the first governments in New Mexico before we had mayors and governors, we had uh, sequias. It has a lot to do with uh, politics and money. A, a fellow once told me that water doesn't flow downhill, it flows towards money. If you're kind of like an economist or a, or a banker or a Wall Street type of person, well, water is absolutely a commodity. The part of me that's not in business where, where I consider water to be a, a commodity that should be for sale if you want it to be. If, it, if you have the uh, use right of water rights, you should be able to buy them, sell them according to the market. The, the other part of me, the average citizen part of me, wants all the water rights to stay agricultural. As long as there's a market incentive um, or profit to be made from taking control or ownership of water and then reselling it to the communities or the residential areas that have a need, a growing need for it or expectation of it, um, then there will be constant pressure to take more and more water out of its natural location and out of its natural role. Part of the state engineer's office is to maintain compliance with those compacts, make sure we're, we're getting what we're supposed to be getting and then delivering the water that we have to deliver to other states. This is like a life to stick a straw under the state of Colorado's line there and suck a little of that water out. But, you know, they have no intention of seeing any of that water of their water become New Mexico water either. It's like we don't want our water to become Texas water. It can be hard to know this just from looking at the surface flows of rivers and streams, but they're typically fed by groundwater as well as by snowmelt and rainfall. And if you interfere or intercept um, a significant portion of the groundwater that feeds the river from underneath, you're actually going to lower and dry out that river from below. The biggest threats to our water rights are um, two things. One is uh, selling and moving of water rights off of the acequias, 
into uh, other communities for other uses and for development as the questions were posed. Water in New Mexico has been over allocated, over appropriated, meaning there's more paper water in the offices in the state engineer's office than there are in the streams. And then land management and water management regulations and the two are managed by different departments, by different folks and um, they rarely are really looked at together and cohesively. But there's no more water up there. It's done. There's very little uh, basically main stem Rio Grande water available left up there. There's an area of Taos County called the Top of the World Farm or Farms and that land, agricultural land, at the very northern edge of the county near Ute Mountain has a substantial amount of water rights that are associated with the old agricultural operations there. Somebody bought it and proposed to sell those water rights after he promised that he would never sell water rights to Santa Fe. There's a number of towns that are coming after Taos's water. Uh, right now, they're uh, Santa Fe County. Uh, just passed an ordinance to try to look into the, I think it's 1,800 acre feet of water that is owned by the Top of the World Farms. I had actually talked to the town of Taos about going up there and buying those so that they would, uh, that the town would secure them for municipal use because had that happened, there's a well field up there and you could have built a pipeline from that area clear down to here and picked up every community on the way down. And transfers are the big controversy. Proposals to move water like the top of the world water all the way out of Taos County down to Santa Fe to feed urban and suburban growth in Santa Fe County could have the potential to really damage our environment and to really damage or limit um, the economic future or viability of our local communities. The really potential negative thing about it is that it would have created a precedent for transferring water from the what's called the upper basin to the middle basin of the Rio Grande, which there's been kind of a, a standing informal policy against doing that, because once that door is open, then it opens the door, kind of opens the floodgate to taking agricultural water rights from northern New Mexico to the urban areas of Santa Fe and Albuquerque. I think the people in the north need to really, really realize what that will do to the communities of Sunshine, Costilla, um, uh, Cerro, and Cuesta. Because if those waters are gone, they're gone. And we need to keep our own water in our own area because eventually we're all going to need that. As you can see, the city of Santa Fe um, has no water. The uh, city of Albuquerque has no water. And so they're looking at the north for that water. And if our water is gone, what happens to us? How do we survive? One of the most important things about water in Taos County is that unlike other areas of the state where there is a pretty much free exchange of, of what's known as water rights, which are a property right to water, in Taos there's been a, an ongoing um, Loft suit for many, many years between Taos Pueblo and the rest of everybody in the valley. Well, you see, the Amlock case down there, uh, obviously uh, that involves the, what is it, the three Pueblos down there, Tsuki, Pawaki, is it Santa Clara, and um, Santa Fe County. It's a big comprehensive settlement for a lawsuit um, that has been pending in court for over 40 years and it's another typically western water issue where you have Indian tribal water rights at issue, you have traditional agricultural communities that have had water rights for a relatively long time, and then you have growing towns or residential development areas. The resolution of the lawsuit um, required a number of things. It required everybody who's a stakeholder with respect to water rights in the in the near valley here in Taos to agree with the Pueblo about how they would split up water. This is water that's out there that has what's known as a paper right but we've never been able to make it a wet water right because of this lawsuit. There's been some you know some pretty tough stuff that we've had to you know sit down and work out and get worked out. We're this close to finishing it. 
hard in the Pecos River right now. They're really suffering in the south and it's getting harder and harder. But one of the ways we're dealing with it is we, we drill water from underground. We bring water from underground and, and put it in the river. We've been mining the groundwater for uh, really about a hundred years now and, and our demand is exceeding the supply and the replenishment of the aquifer. We've been trying for the last 10 years to develop a land use plan that is fair to everyone in the community. And, and a land use plan is a living document, so a land use plan can be changed at any time. So as new ideas or new uses come forward, we can actually change the, the actual plan. Yeah, that was uh, rejected at a recent county meeting. And, uh, and all, all of the conversations and efforts of people at had were essentially thrown out. The main uh, factor was that we have a pretty strong real estate and home building uh, interest groups that they didn't want to see that. They felt like their interest would be um, hurt if there was a moratorium. Now a future problem or war you could say or battle that may arise um, in this valley is proposals or at least um, consideration being given to a more aggressive plan of interfering with the natural water flow. If we're going to insist in viewing water as a private property right, as a commodity, there's going to be huge problems ahead. And there's already problems. We're already seeing the problems. And if we can't get the leadership to acknowledge those problems and address those problems, then that's going to be problematic ultimately for everybody. You really have to sort of take smaller steps and be incremental and just take it a a piece at a time and so you know in hindsight I think uh, that probably should have been the approach that, that should have been taken. I believe growth should be very responsible and sustainable and planned. If small developers were required to purchase water rights in order to do their developments uh, they would be competing directly with everybody else who's in the water rights business. Again, it's about values and people have really expressed a statement of values in that water is more important than money. As long as they can hold out with that, that's going to be what uh, we're really counting on. Well, I think it basically is because we loved the land so much and uh, thought it was so beautiful. And I saw other communities in northern New Mexico that we thought were so beautiful when we first saw them. And then over the years, over the decades, we saw them change and lose their, their value as, as farms and then their natural beauty. When the acequia goes dry in June, there's nobody to compensate me for my property. There's nobody to, if I don't use my million gallons, there's no, the state doesn't come in and bring me a water tank. Taos over the last 30 years has seen a huge infusion of, of people from everywhere else. But we're also receiving the majority of the, of the growth and development um, pressures with people wanting to live here and, and people migrating in from other parts of the, of the country. While tur tourism is somewhat important to the economy of Taos, Probably more, much more important to the economy of Taos is in migration. Well, I guess that's a matter of controversial, uh, sort of a controversial questions at times. Some people think it's very important and others don't like to see it. That growth, that means that the population would essentially, uh, is going to double about every 30 years or so. There's always a limit to growth anywhere. I think one of the things we probably going to see is a decline in water availability though. If I were to sell my water right to some developer who wanted to build a golf course for example, then that developer could transfer my water right that was a surface water right and transfer it to a groundwater right and stick a well in the ground like a straw into a glass and, and that developer can and will take that volume of water. In, in Bolinas, California in 2000, um, nine or ten, I think it was 2010, a water meter changed hands for $300,000. And in a larger community like, like Taos or like Santa Fe or Albuquerque, that kind of high price for, the ac for access to water would be considered a violation of human rights. There's a dollar value that developers and uh, 
and commodity brokers put on water, you know, and New Mexico has the highest price. In fact, Pahuacet, Tezucanambe has the highest price water rights in the country. We need economic growth in our community because, you know, young people in our community don't really have jobs that, that, uh, that are viable in our community. You know, most people get educations and then they move out of our community. So one of the things we have to be aware of is that we can't tell someone to say you can't develop your property. We have to protect their property rights as well we, because it's important in Taos County and, and the land is all that a lot of people have. We need to gather together and make sure that uh, we become one voice and we're heard. The future in New Mexico is water is very scarce and I think you're going to see an awful lot more competition for it over the years and there's going to be a lot more squabbling over it, unfortunately. And I think you're going to see that throughout the whole U.S. West because it's a very limited commodity. And so the water wars, I think, will continue unabated forever. My brother said when I was nine he tied me up in fishing line threw me in the pond one gold bite was gone and I remember how they fought You should see the fish he caught Bigger than a tank Not even a thanks And I cried up to the moon And he stood up there and didn't care What I was doing And I died a bit too soon Alright to cry in the afternoon. Appeal. Look, I turned out fine, and I die all the time. 